Hello, people of Whiteboard Land. You've heard that everything is made of atoms, and atoms are so small you can't see them with the human eye. There are different types of atoms, like oxygen, aluminum, gold, helium. These are called elements, and they're organized into the periodic table. But how do we get things like water? It's not on the periodic table. You may know that water is H2O, but what does that mean? To answer that question, we need to take a look at an atom. In the center, there is a positively charged nucleus. Flying around the nucleus are electrons, which charge it negatively. There are many layers of electrons, but right now we only care about the outer layer. These are called valence electrons. The periodic table of elements is organized by the amount of valence electrons an atom of an element has. One valence electron, two valence electrons, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, which is a full outer shell. This is called the octet rule. The exceptions are hydrogen and helium, which are full with just two. That is why helium is over here with all the eights. This is really the full column, and helium is full with just two. Now all the atoms want to be full, and to do that, they need to join together or bond. There are two types of bonds, covalent and ionic. Covalent bonding is when atoms share some of their valence electrons so they can get a full outer shell. Take a look at these two fluorine atoms. They each have seven valence electrons, but they want to have eight so they can be full. If we draw a circle around this fluorine atom, but we include one of the other atom's electrons, and we draw a circle around the other one, including the first one's electrons, they are sharing two in the middle. Each circle contains one nucleus and eight electrons, so both atoms are full and happy. That is one way atoms can bond. The other way they can bond is called ionic bonding, and that is when an atom steals from another to be full. If we have a sodium atom and a chlorine atom, the chlorine atom only needs one more electron to have a full outer shell. So it can steal the one from the sodium atom, and then it is full. Because the chlorine is gaining an electron, and electrons have a negative charge, the chlorine atom now has a negative charge. Because the sodium atom loses an electron, it gets a positive charge, since subtracting a negative is the same as a positive. If you're wondering why the sodium atom is okay with chlorine stealing its electron, you need to remember that these are just the valence electrons. These are just the outer shell. Sodium has more electrons in its inner shells, and they are full, so sodium is happy. So there we have it. Covalent is sharing, and ionic is stealing. An extra thing to keep in mind. Carbon always shares. So if you have one carbon and two oxygen, the oxygen can't steal two from the carbon to get their eight. Carbon has to share. Bonding is amazing because it allows new materials to be formed from the basic building blocks. Remember how water isn't on the periodic table? It's formed with a bond. In fact, it is one of the special molecules that can do both covalent and ionic bonding, known as polar covalent. Oxygen can steal from two hydrogen to get eight, negatively charging the oxygen and positively charging the hydrogens, or oxygen and hydrogen can share. Both of these result in H2O, otherwise known as water.